and welcome everybody to know all about nanoscience and technology. In our previous video, we had a brief description about nanoscience and nanotechnology. And I'm sure now you guys know the basic storyline of nanotechnology. And to those who haven't seen the video, the link is given below in the description box. So make sure you watch the video. Okay, so moving on. Today, let's take a step forward and know about nanomaterials, which are the building blocks of nanotechnology. Bigger and larger things aren't always better, right? Sometimes you need the objects you deal with to be lighter, smaller, but stronger at the same time. Like for example, a tennis player would want his racket to be lighter, but strong enough at the same time. While a farmer would want only a small amount of fertilizers to have its work done. Is it possible? In this case, nanomaterials come into play to meet these needs. So to know what exactly are these nanomaterials, let's start our today's video. In today's video, you will come to know about basic definitions of nanomaterials, types of nanomaterials based on their origin, uses of nanomaterials, advantages and disadvantages of nanomaterials. To begin with, let's know the definition of nanomaterials. Nanomaterials can be defined as materials that have at least one dimension in nanometer scale that is 1 to 100 nanomaterial. Nanomaterials are cornerstones of nanoscience and nanotechnology. These are the tiny materials with higher potential. Nanomaterials can exist in different forms such as particles, tubes, powders, coatings etc. Nanomaterials can be metals, ceramics, polymeric materials or even composite materials. Now this was about definition and knowing the uh, knowing the nanomaterials. Now let's take a look at their types. Based on their origin, nanomaterials are divided into two types. That is non-intentionally made nanomaterials and intentionally made nanomaterials. So firstly, let's take a look at the first type. That is non-intentionally made nanomaterials. These are the nanomaterials that occur naturally in the environment. For example, viruses, nanoparticles produced during volcanic eruptions or that are produced by human activity without intention. For example, nanoparticles produced from diesel consumption and even some of the biological components like DNA and protein. Many important functions of living organisms take place at the nanoscale. The human body uses natural nanomaterials such as proteins and other molecules to control the body's many systems and processes. A typical protein hemoglobin which carries oxygen through the bloodstream is just 5 nanometer in diameter. Now let's see the other type. The other type is intentionally made nanomaterials. These are the nanomaterials produced deliberately through a defined fabrication process such as engineered nanomaterials which are also known as ENMs. ENMs or engineered nanomaterials are materials designed at the nanoscale level to take benefit of their small size and novel properties they exhibit which are otherwise not seen in their bulk counterparts. Today, different commercially available products such as sunscreens, cosmetics, sporting goods, electronics are manufactured using engineered nanomaterials. Now, you may be wondering how nanomaterials are different from bulk materials and what makes and what makes them so special. The reason is following two factors. Firstly, nanomaterials have much greater surface area to volume ratio than their bulk counterparts which leads to their better reactivity and strength. And secondly, also at the nanoscale, quantum effects come into the picture and become much more important in determining the material's properties and characteristics, leading to their novel optical, electrical and magnetic behavior. Now that you know the importance of nanomaterials, let's have a look at their uses. Nanomaterials show different different applications in different fields from healthcare, cosmetics, food sector, water purification, electronics, ports to agriculture. How? Let's see. Nanomaterials show their applications in healthcare, like for example in drug delivery or antibacterial bandages. 
In cosmetics, nanomaterials such as TiO2 nanoparticles or even ZNO nanoparticles are being used in sunscreens, which are even commercially available these days. In food sector, nanomaterials are being used in food packaging and food sensing. In water purification, nanomaterials are used in making the filters or making the membranes or the adsorbents. In electronics, nanostructured semiconductors which show non-linear optical properties also exhibit special properties like luminescence. In sports, nanomaterials are used to make lighter baseball bats or even lighter tennis rackets. In agriculture, nanomaterials are used in synthesize in synthesis of nano fertilizers and nano pesticides in our coming videos we'll have a look at each of this application elaborately and see the actual functioning of nanomaterials moving on as they say every coin has two sides in the same way nanomaterials have their own share of advantages and disadvantages firstly let's take a look at advantages of nanomaterials the extremely small size of nanomaterials offer various different advantages compared to their bulk counterparts. You can tailor these nanomaterials according to your desired requirements for specific application. Third, nanomaterials have high porosity which makes them useful for various industrial purposes. Nanomaterials help in energy generation by making the solar panels more efficient and cost effective. Nanomaterials offer advantages in electronics by increasing the accuracy of the construction and electronic circuits at an atomic level leading to the development of numerous electronic products. Also, their large surface to volume ratio makes them useful for various purposes. Now, let's see some of its disadvantages. Firstly, very less is known about information on the health and safety aspects of exposure to the nanomaterials. Secondly, nanomaterials are most likely to have higher toxicity than bulk materials if they are insoluble or penetrate biological membranes or even persist in the body. Their primary toxic effect is to induce inflation in the respiratory tract causing tissue damage. And lastly, engineered nanomaterials released in water bodies can risk the fresh water and also marine species by inducing decline in their life processes like growth and reproduction. Hence, it is important to have toxicological studies and risk assessment of nanomaterials before their use and it is also important to have a safety by design approach in the development of nanomaterials in order to reduce its potential impact on health and the environment. So lastly, I consider any technology comes with its own share and share of merits and demerits. But it's up to us that how wisely we make use of that technology for the development and betterment of our society and the mankind. And the same implies to the nanotechnology. So guys, this was all about nanomaterials and I think this video must have helped you guys with a better understanding of nanomaterials. So if you found this video helpful, then do like, share this video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel to explore more about nanoscience and nanotechnology. And also, once you subscribe the channel, don't forget to press the bell icon so that you get notified about uh, new vid videos that we upload every time. And also let me know in the comment section below about your doubts and what next would you like to know about the nanotechnology. Till then, be happy and keep learning.